This is the BTEC page where you have applied. I have just shared the screen and I hope it's visible. So this is the BTEC page where you have applied, the same page here you could see. Um, you can join this Telegram channel for updates uh, regarding the events and all if you wish. And then I would request each and every one of you to just visit the information handbook. Because what is the counseling process, how it's going to happen, everything is given in detail in this. Uh, all the process, um, what is the first stage, even the refund policies, everything is given in this book itself. So I would request each and everybody to just get in, um, just check this from our BTEC page. Okay, regarding the slot booking, even the marking scheme, the syllabus of the examination, everything is given here. So for AEEE, the majority questions will be from mathematics, it's 40. Physics, there are 30 questions, chemistry 25 and English 5. So total of 100 questions and a total of 300 marks. So three marks is awarded for every correct answer and minus one for every wrong answer. And in order for the scholarship to be continued in each year, these are some of the terms and conditions that you have to satisfy. And towards the end of this document, you could see the syllabus also. So before the start of the session, I just want to make something very clear to all of you that every examination, this is just a basic general thing, every examination or every entrance examination that you're writing, there will be different level of questions. Same like your board examination, there will be different level of or range of questions. So there is nothing to worry about uh, the exam will be tough or something like that. An exam paper or a question paper will be prepared in, in such a basis that there will be easy questions, there will be moderate questions and there will be difficult questions. So easy and moderate questions, the count will be high and there will be less count of difficult questions. So please do keep in mind and whenever you are solving some questions, you feel like yeah, this is actually very easy. Maybe the question that is really easy for you might not be easy for somebody else. So please utilize the time and solve all of the questions uh, um, in, in this one, one month. As many questions as possible in this one month. I hope I'm audible. So I have shared the screen. Please do take your uh, book and pen and we'll be solving the questions from the chapter complex numbers and there will be a mix of questions from other chapters also. So initially, I'll just read out the question and please do think about how you will be solving the question. If for those students who have completed it, please do type the answer in the chat box and then we, we will discuss it. If Z is a complex number, the minimum value of mode Z plus mode Z minus 1 is. A very common question which comes in examinations. Thus, the minimum value of some term. It's, it, it will be something like mode Z minus 2, mode Z minus 3, something like that. There will be different. To all the students who are continuously typing in the chat box, kindly hold on. I will respond towards the end of the session. And the recordings of these uh, sessions are already available in the web page. Today's session will also be available. Sorry, in the YouTube channel. Okay. So if Z is a complex number, the minimum value of mode Z plus mode Z minus 1 is. So it, it is of the form mode A plus mode B. And they are asking the minimum value. The only thing that you have to understand is some formula for mode, mode A plus mode B or mode Z1 plus mode Z2. And what is actually the formula? Is there any condition or criteria whether value is less than 1, greater than 1? Some, some criteria will be there. If that is there, you need to understand that. And how to find the minimum value. That is what you have to think about. So the question is, if Z is a complex number, the minimum value of mode Z plus mode Z plus 1 is. I hope all of you are solving the questions. I could see Aditya, Gautam, Divya. Nandini, there are a lot of students here. I would request each and everyone to think of which formula we'll, we'll be using or what concept we'll be using to solve the question. I would request you to solve this and type the answer in the chat box. And we both can solve it together. This is an easy question, right? Okay, I got one answer as one. Okay. Let's check whether this answer is one and I would request e the other students to look into this. Given Z is a complex number, minimum value of mode Z plus mode Z minus 1 is. Okay. There is 0 also in the chat box. Okay. Completely fine. There is 1. I think 5 to 6 students have typed it's 1. There is 0. There is 2. Okay. This is actually the basic concept that you study in the chapter, right? 
when are we start the concept of complex numbers we'll have some basic concepts so this comes under that okay so if z is a complex number the minimum value of mode z plus mode z plus one is so this is what the question is so now we'll be solving it so just look into this inequality that we have studied mode z1 plus mode z2 equal to mode z1 minus mode z2 so you have studied this formulas in different ways right so the first one is mode of a minus b less than or equal to mode a plus mode b you can also write this uh, write these formulas in uh, a way like mode z1 minus mode z2 less than or equal to mode z1 plus mode z2. I hope that part is clear. Or you can write mode of z1 plus z2 greater than or equal to mode z1 minus z2. It will be mode of a plus b greater than or equal to mode a minus mode b or mode z1 minus mode z2. The two formulas that you have studied together in the classes. So here what I'll do is based on this concept, it was mode z1, mode z and mode z minus 1. So it will be a minus b. I'll, I'll just show the question once again for those who are saying it. Just a second. Okay. This is what the question is. It's mode z plus mode z minus 1. So here for a it's mode z, for b it's z minus 1. So it will be z minus z minus 1. That is z minus z plus 1. So both the z will be gone. It's mode 1. So mode z plus mode z minus 1 is less than or equal to mode 1. You can write this as 1. So the value will be less than or equal to 1. That's what the range we got. So once we are taking the answer, the minimum value will be 1. I think almost all of you have typed the answer as 1 in the chat box. Is this question clear? This is a very simple question. Based on the inequality, you can just solve it very easily. Was this an easy question for you? I would request each and everyone to respond. Okay. So yes, another question that also comes in our textbook. But these type of questions also comes in examinations. That is very, very important. So 1 plus iota, two, oh, 1 plus 2i, 1 plus 3i, etc. 1 plus ni. They have given its alpha plus i beta. Then what's the value of 2 into 5 into 10, etc. up to 1 plus n square. Is it alpha square minus beta square? Is it 1? Is it alpha square plus beta square? Is it alpha plus 1? So you have to just solve this. You have to equate it to this one. That is 2 into 5 into 10, etc. 1 plus n square then you will be able to solve this question. A very simple question. So, meanwhile, students, if there are any queries or any doubts in between, I would request you to type that in the chat box. Okay, there is alpha square minus beta square as an option in the chat box. Okay, completely fine. Okay, there is somebody who has given alpha square plus beta square. Okay. So, I got two options as of now. Alpha square minus beta square, alpha square plus beta square. Okay. Let's check this. There is alpha plus beta also. So, A, C, D. I got the options A, C, D in the chat box. So, one is not there. It's A, C, D. Everybody is saying it's A, C and D. Okay. Is it alpha square plus beta square? Okay. So, yes. I think as it's an easy question and most of the students have answered, we'll just take it how to solve this question. So, this also is based on the very basic concept that we have studied in the chapters. The mode concept, right? So initially what I've done is, the easy way to solve this is, I'm just going to take mode here. So this is mode of 1 plus i, 1 plus 2i, 1 plus 3i, etc. 1 plus ni is equal to mode of alpha plus i beta. This is like root of a square plus b square, mode a plus i b, root of a square plus b square. We have studied this, right? So here it will be root of alpha square plus beta square. This terms I'll be able to write as root of 1 square plus 1 square, 1 square plus 2 square, 1, 1 square plus 3 square, 1 square plus n square. So this is, in the question, you what the question is asking us is 2 into 5 into, I'll, I'll just show it. It's 2 into 5 into 10 into 1 plus 
this is what the question is 2 into 5 into 10 into 1 plus n the whole square. So here if I'm squaring, I'll get that. So this is root 2, this is root 5, this is root 10 and root of 1 square plus n square equal to root of alpha square plus beta square. So I've just squared it and I got the term and it's alpha square plus beta square. A very simple question but all these are previous year questions. Okay, so for this question, I got all the options in the chat box. That is A, B, C, and D from the students here. So what you have to think is, this is what is given and they have given that it is equal to alpha plus i beta. And they're asking what is this term? So you have to think in such a way that whether you'll be able to solve this to this way. 2 into 5 into 10 into 1 plus n square. You can use the basic concept root of a square plus b square. So you'll get the values 2, 5, 10 and 1 plus n square and on solving you'll get it as alpha square plus beta square because I've used the formula here then I have taken the square so the root is removed and it's alpha square plus beta square. Is this question clear? This is a mix Harita. Both are the A triple as well as J E R. And even some of the previous year J E questions usually comes in A triple exams also. With the, I would say some changes. I hope that's clear. So yes. This is also a very simple question. Okay. Find the complex number set satisfying. Oh sorry. The equations. Z minus 12. It's mode. Mode of Z minus 12 by Z minus 8i equal to 5 by 3. And mode of Z minus 4 by Z minus 8 equal to 1. Maybe some of you might have seen these questions also previously. But these pattern might repeat in the examinations. That why, that's why these are important. Okay. Mode Z minus 12 by Z minus 8i equal to 5 by 3. And they have given Z mode of Z minus 4 by Z minus 8 equal to 1. You have to find the complex number Z satisfying these equations. It's very easy. Z equal to X plus Y, Y. You have to solve this, substitute for both of them. And you have to find out X and Y. And you have to give me the value of Z. It could be a single value. It could be, it's like based on the solutions. It can vary. Based on the roots, it can vary. I'll just read the question once again. Find the complex number Z. Satisfying the equations mode of Z minus 12 by Z minus 8 I equal to 5 by 3. So you have, you will get the real and imaginary part here. Here also it's given as z minus 4 by z minus 8 equal to 1. You'll have two equations once you're solving it. You have to find the value of x and y because the complex number is in the form of either a, b, a plus i, b or x plus i, y. Once you have the values, you can give me the complex numbers which satisfies the equations. I hope you're solving it along with me. Uh, yes, Sri Vaishnavi, if you have any queries, can you please type that in the chat box? Uh, Sri Vaishnavi, I can see you have raised your hands. So if there is anything, please do type it in the chat box. Yes, I think we'll just start solving this. This is a very simple question and you have to be careful about the little calculations. It's not about this problem or anything, but when are you writing the examinations, the whole concentration calculation, it's very, very important. Yes, that is there. It's somewhat tricky because you need to understand what you have to do or you have to substitute. The chances of a student making error in this question, the probability is high. Okay. So yes, we know the complex number is of the form X plus I, Y. So, oh. I'm so sorry. Okay. So the complex number Z is of the form X plus I, Y. We all know this. Then this is what is given. So we'll be able to write this as 3 in the mode of Z minus 12 equal to 5 in the mode of Z minus 8 I. I know Z is X plus I, Y. You can substitute for the terms and you can find the real and imaginary part separately. So this will be something like X plus I, Y minus 12. This will be 5 into mode of x plus i y minus 8 i. So this is y minus 8 into i and here it's x minus 12 that's real and i y is the image. So you have to remove this mode so you have to just square this terms. So what it will be? 
9 into x minus 12 the whole square plus 9 y square okay which is equal to you just have to solve this that's all we have squared the terms you just have to solve this you just have to form one equation now you have another equation also that is z minus 4 by z minus 8 equal to 1 same way you have to substitute for the complex number you have to solve it and you have to get the you'll have two equations you have to solve those two to get the value of x and y and then you have to substitute it back what is x what is y you have to substitute it back here So this is x minus 12, the whole square. This is 3 square is 9. 9. Um, for i, we have uh, substituted for 1. So 9 into y square equal to, this is 25 square plus 25 into y minus 8 whole square. So the same way I have taken z minus 4 by z minus 8. I've squared this. I have one equation here. So initially for the second equation, if I'm solving, there is... I'll be able to remove the terms and I'll be able to find out the value of x equal to 6. Once you have the value of x equal to 6, you can just substitute it. I have done it in the, I would say, the detailed way. So you can substitute for x equal to 6 in the other equation, you'll get another equation. So for x, you have one term and y, you have 8 and 7. So from that, you could substitute for both the values and you can find out x plus i, y. It's 6 plus 8i and 6 plus 17i. I think... Uh, one or two students have typed this answer in the chat box. So, is this question clear? Is this question clear? Or do you want me to repeat it? It's just the basic idea that you should have. And after that, it's just completely problem solving. Dear children, I want you to respond so that we'll be able to move to the next question. I've given you the basic idea. Okay, there are people who are asking. Okay, I'll just repeat it. And those students have not got the answer. You can leave some space. You can try to solve this once the session is over. Okay, or maybe towards the end of the session, I'll be here only. If you want me to um, explain it individually, I'll be here. Okay, so just the basic concept. I'll just repeat it again. Find the complex number Z, satisfying the equations mode of z minus 12 by z minus 8 i equal to 5 i 3 and mode of z minus 4 by z minus 8 equal to 1. So z is a complex number it's of the form x plus i y that we know, right we have to find actually the value that satisfies the below 2. So I'll be able to solve this as 3 no mode z minus 12 equal to 5 no mode z minus 8 i. I have to substitute for Z so that I will be able to find out X and Y here or A and B here. What are your thing? So, I have substituted for X plus IY minus 12 into 3 equal to 5 into X plus IY minus 8. So, I have an equation and similarly, I have another one here. Z minus 4 equal to Z minus 8. Once I have these two, once I have simplified these two in terms of X and Y, what you have to do is you have to find the value of X as well as Y. So, for X, Initially, while solving, you'll get the value of 6 and for y, you have the two values. So just substitute that and there you go with the solutions. So, I'll just show it again. This is from where we have started. The first section, we have substituted it. We have squared it for solving and we have one equation here. The second one, we have started here, z minus 4, z minus 8. So, this is something like x minus 4, the whole square plus y square, x minus 8, the whole square plus y square. So, once you solve the second equation, you'll get the value of x. Once you have x equal to 6, you have a, an equation that was unsolved here. So, you could substitute for x in the first equation and then you can find the solution. So just a second, substitute for x here, that is 6. You could just solve it, just the max you have to do and you'll get the value of y as 8 and 17. So, it's 6 plus 8i and 6 plus 17i. I hope that's clear because why we have 8 and 17. Yes, we'll move to next question. Next question is a very simple question. You can solve it in different methods in the way you like. Whether you have to substitute for i, whether you have to substitute for um, i in terms of z square, in terms of minus z or in terms of this i, every way it's possible. So the question is, if i z cube plus z square minus z plus i equal to 0, then what is mode z? 
a very common type of question with different equations that comes. I z cube plus z square minus z plus i equal to 0. Then mod z is equal to. What is the value of mod z? Maybe those students who are not having a clear idea about the, I would say the chapter wise concept. I would request you to just solve maximum problems as of now and to refer the concept whenever you need that. It's not like you can't study the whole theory once and then you can start problem solving. What is required is solving maximum problems as possible. And whenever you require that theory, you have to just refresh that theory. That's all is needed. So yes, please do start solving it and please do give me the value of what is mode set. Okay. So the basic concept that we have is i is equal to root of minus 1 or i square equal to minus 1. You can make use of that in whichever area you uh, feel is okay and then you can start solving it. But the initial uh, or the final aim is something like what is mode set. Okay. No, actually, Sai, calculator is not allowed in the examination hall. Okay, there is somebody who has given me an answer as 0. There is someone who has given me an answer as 1. Okay. So, those students are asking calculator is not allowed in the examination hall. Okay, it's B, C, D. I got all the options. So, yes, I think majority of answers are like 1. Uh, actually, Chinmay, that will make it, uh, I would say, uh, then you'll have two unknowns in that case. So here, that's why I've mentioned the formula or what we have studied, i is equal to root of minus 1 or i square equal to minus 1. That's what you can use here and you can make one or two equations, substitute for z. What is the value? You can just, it's, it's of the form, I would say x minus 1 equal to 0 or x plus 5 equal to 0, you'll have the solutions. That way you have to think. There are a lot of questions coming. I'll come to you. Okay. So yes, let's discuss this. And uh, Chinmay, one more thing. Yeah. This is something which most students might be confused about. When to start. In that problem, I have substituted it this way. Can I use that same substitution here? Maybe in some problem which I've been doing in this chapter, when are this type of problem comes, I always used to do that. So that. I, I would say that idea or that trick comes to your mind when you solve a lot of questions. When you are with this problems, you'll automatically get the idea. So the only request or the only um, thing which you can, which can help you to understand yeah, which way you have to start solving the problem is practicing more problems. So yes, I have to find out mode z. So here what I've done is I have substituted for here one z square. This I'll be able to find as one z square, right? For that one, I have substituted as minus i square. So this will be i z cube minus i square z square minus z plus i. If i z square is taken, it will be z minus i. And if minus 1 is taken, it will be z minus i. So I got two values. i z square minus 1 equal to, one, um, sorry, i z square minus 1 and z minus i. Here, i z square equal to 1 and z is equal to i. Now I have to solve for mode z. So what I'll be doing is, I know there are students who are raising their hands. Just hold on for a moment. So this is the first one, i z square equal to 1. So here z square equal to 1 by i, that is minus i square by i. So it will be minus i. So z square, if I'm taking the mode, it will be something like mode of z square, which is equal to mode of minus i. So it is z square equal to i, which is equal to 1. Same way here z equal to i. So this will be mode i which is equal to 1. Here you can solve it also uh, by substituting maybe for minus 1. What is actually? We, we know the general thing i square equal to minus 1. So you can substitute for minus 1 as i square. So this will be i z square minus z square plus uh, I would say i z plus 1. So in any way, any substitution that you're doing and that you're solving, you'll come to this way. So when you have these two, you have to solve for what is mode z. I hope this is clear. Yeah. 
That's what the formula that you have studied. That's a general equation, right? I square is equal to minus 1 and I is equal to root of minus 1. The very basic concept that we study in the chapter, complex numbers. For the value of iota, what you have to substitute. I hope everybody knows this concept, iota square is equal to minus 1. Because I could see somebody asking that in the chat box. Dear children, can you please respond? Is this question clear? Can we move forward or do you want me to repeat? If there is anyone who wants me to repeat, please do type that in the chat box. That's why I have told. It's not like you have to solve this question in the way that I have done. Here you can write it as 1. Or here it's for minus 1. So anywhere if you want, you can go with the substitution. And you can solve it. Okay, completely fine. Now moving to the next question. This is also a very simple question. But this question is tricky and it comes in a lot of examinations. Here the value might change. 2 plus i root 3, maybe 5 minus some, some term. This will be ch changing. This term will be changing. So the least positive integer n for which 1 plus i root 3 by 1 minus i root 3 always to n equal to 1 is. Okay, there are a lot of students who are asking most important chapters in AAA. Okay, to score decent percentile, somebody is asking in chat box. Let me come towards the end of the session. I will help you. And one more thing. What are portions are there in the syllabus? You will at least get one question from each chapter. So, that's the way an AAA question paper is made. So it's not like this chapter there will be five questions, this chapter there will be three questions. So you have to just cover almost all the portions to get an idea about it. It's not like a board or other exams. So yes, I would request everyone to start solving this question. Least positive integer n for which 1 plus i root 3 by 1 minus i root 3 whole raised to n is. What is this term? Something raised to n is equal to 1. In the same concept that you have studied in the classes, Something raised to n is equal to 1. You have studied this as 1 plus i root 3 by 1 minus i root 3 as a term. If you know, if you are able to recollect it, then this question is very easy to solve. So, please just try it. What we have to do, whether we have to take, uh, whether we have to rationalize this, whether I have to rationalize this term and then I have to go for n, what you have to do. Okay, there is someone who has given me an answer as option D. Okay. Completely fine. Those students are okay. There is somebody who is giving me an answer C. Okay. Okay, there is option A also. So A, C, D. I got all the options. Okay, there is C also here. So, yes, it's A, B, C, D. So, for all the students who have given me answers, can you please just recheck what you have done? Okay, there is somebody who has given C. Okay, 3. Okay, I think let's discuss. I, I don't want to spare more time. So, this is the very basic thing. Without solving itself, you will be able to solve. I hope you have studied the formulas and all. Omega cube is equal to 1. I hope you remember that. And you have studied the equation. Minus 1 minus i root 3 by 2 is equal to omega and minus 1 plus i root 3 by 2 equal to omega q. So, here when you see something like 1 plus i root 3, 1 minus i root 3, we have seen that with the concept of cube root of unity. So, here in the first part, if I am if I'm just multiplying it with minus 1 by 2, I have the term omega. If I am multiplying here with minus 1 by 2, I have the term omega square. So, this is something like omega raised to n equal to 1, omega cube equal to 1, cube root of omega. That's what called the cube root of unity. 
you have studied this, right? 1 plus omega plus omega square equal to 1. Omega cube is equal to 1. So, this question can be solved in that way. When you have an idea of the concept. That is 1 plus i root 3 by 1 minus i root 3 whole raised to n equal to 1. You need to find the value of n. We know when we multiply this whole thing by 1 minus 2. It's like in the numerator and the denominator. We'll have our terms omega and omega square. Because it's whole raised to n is equal to 1. That's what that has to strike for you. So this is minus 1 minus i root 3 by 2. And this is minus 1 plus i root 3 by 2. Minus 1 minus i root 3 by 2 is omega. And minus 1 plus i root 3 by 2 is omega square. So this is. Oh, I have written it oppositely. It's omega square by omega, which is equal to omega. So omega whole raised to n is equal to 1. That is 3. Omega cube is equal to 1. I'll, I'll just change it when I put this in the web page. Okay. I'll just update this, solve it and put this in the website. Now for those students who are not able to understand the concept or not able to remember it initially, I would just give you an idea. You can just start rationalizing the terms. That's the first thing you have to think about. Yes, you can convert to polar form and solve. That's also one method. Any method you can use. This is one among that. But this is the easiest one when it comes to somebody who is having a basic idea about the complex numbers. Or somebody who is good at the basics of the chapter. So here what I've done is the initial part you can check. 1 plus i root 3 by 1 minus i root 3. I have multiplied it and divided it with 1 plus i root 3. So this I have a term. It's 1 plus 2 root 3 by 3. Sorry, root 3 minus 3 by this is 1 square a square a plus b a minus b. So 1 minus i do root 3 square. You can substitute for minus 1. So it's 4. This is 1 minus minus 1 into 3. So this is 1 plus 3 that is 4. So you have a term here once you are solving this it's for from here 2 you can take outside you can cancel it so this will be i root 3 minus 1 by 2 similarly if you're rationalizing it with 1 minus i root 3 you'll have another term that is minus 2 by 1 plus i root 3 now coming to something is n you can try substituting for all these values and you can find out whether this is correct or not 1 plus i root 3 by 1 minus i root 3 whole cube so this is the term so you have solved and you have found out, you have rationalized these terms and you have got these values. So once you are substituting for this, everything will get cancelled and you will have the value 1. So this is the way you can verify this also. So I am just saying there are different methods. You can convert it to the form that you have studied and you can solve it also. And you can verify it this way also. So I hope this question is clear. Is there anyone who is having doubt in this? Dear children, is there anyone who is having any doubt in this question? If you won't, I'll repeat it. Otherwise, we can move. Uh, there is someone. Okay, just a second. Biddy, I think. I hope it's clear. Okay. So now another question, I want all of you to give me the correct answer for this. One root, one of the roots of the equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 is 2 minus 3i, then the other root is. I have an equation. The solution is given in a complex number form. It's 2 minus 3i. Then that is one root. There is another root. What is the other root? I think two, three students have typed the option 2 plus 3i. Okay. Very simple question, but it's going to give you three marks. Okay. So just hold on for a second. We'll just solve it right away. One root of the equation has given us 2 minus 3i. So we know the complex number, those roots. It's always in conjugate pairs. So if it's 2 minus 3i, the other one is obviously 2 plus 3i. So there is nothing to solve here, nothing to work out here. It's just the concept. 
these roots are always happening in conjugate pairs or this always occur in conjugate pair. So if one is given as 2 plus 3i, the other one is 2 minus 3i. If one is given as i plus 1, the other one is actually i minus 1. That's it. Is this clear? Can we move forward? This is a very simple question. Very, very simple question. You don't know, need anything to solve it. Yes. This type of question is literally important for the examination. A value of theta for which 2 plus 3i sin theta by 1 minus 2i sin theta is purely imaginary. Sometimes they will give it's purely re real. And this term also changes. But this, this concept or this type of question repeats. Value of theta for which some equation will be there and they will be giving it. It is purely imaginary. It is purely real. Some concept will be there and you have to find out the value of theta here. This question repeats and this is very, very important. So here the options are pi by 3, pi by 6, sine inverse of root 3 by 4 and sine inverse of 1 by root 3. Just think how you will be able to find out the theta here. The only clue is given as it's purely imaginary. A value of theta for which this term it's 2 plus 3i sine theta by 2, 1 minus 2i sine theta is purely imaginary is. <coughs> so please do solve this. <coughs> Yes, almost all the questions that we are discussing are either previous year HRD or JE questions. And uh, those students are asking whether the difficulty level is of same of JE or something like that. It's I would say it's lesser compared to that of JE. Okay, I think three, four students. Okay, it's D. Most of them are giving option D only. Okay, completely fine. Good. Okay, so I think we'll not waste much time. We'll just discuss this. Okay. Um, actually, the portal in which you are taking that uh, Sunday test, right? Evening, the practice test portal. So in that, these documents are uploaded. All the session details and everything is uploaded there. Just the videos are available in the uh, YouTube channel only. So yes, the clue is that it's purely imaginary, which means real part is zero. This question is done if you have the concept. So I'm just rationalizing it. Multiplied by 1 plus 2i sine theta by 1 plus 2i sine theta. I've solved it. I have uh, just separated it to real portion and the imaginary portion. Once it's purely imaginary, the real part is zero. That is 2 minus 6 sine square theta by 1 plus 4 sine square theta equal to zero. So that is 2 minus 6 sine square theta equal to zero. If 2 is equal to... 6 sin square theta, then sin square theta is equal to 2 by 6, that is 1 by 3. Yes, I think I'll just show this here. Yes. So sin square theta equal to 2 by 6, which is 1 by 3. So what is sin theta? Sin theta equal to 1 by root 3 and theta is equal to sin inverse of 1 by root 3. That is option D. I'll just show it from the initial part. This is where we start. For these type of questions, if it's purely real, imaginary part will not be there. That part is equal to zero. You have to equate it. So yes, this is the question. I'll just show you the from where we have started. You have to rationalize it. That is very, very important in this chapter in this type of questions. You have to separate for the two portions, that is real and imaginary portions. And then you have to equate for zero. Then it's done. And mostly it will be something like here it's sine theta. That might vary different questions that comes. Okay. So it's 6 sine square theta is equal to sine theta equal to 1 by root 3. So theta equal to sine inverse of 1 by root 3. Now coming to another question. I think this is also familiar for you. This is one of the, um, I would say, a very important type of question. The point represented by 2 plus AI in the urban plane moves one unit to eastward. So initially it's moving one unit to eastward, then two unit to north. And finally, from the north, it moves two root two units to the southwest direction. So we have to find the new position. Initially, the position is 2 plus I. 
from the red moves one unit east two units north two root two units southwest its new position and the plane that is what you have to find out is it minus one minus i is it minus two minus i is it two plus two i or is it one plus i so for this question it's initially like based on the angle maybe it's uh, um okay there is d there is c there is a okay it's 2 plus 2i okay there are a lot of options coming up c is there d is there it's mostly c and d i think right c d okay i am also confused now whether i don't know whether i have made some mistake we we'll just take it together just a second and students when are you solving a question please do make sure that you are just rechecking it before clicking the option that is very very important okay so yes we'll just start solving the question i have a diagram it's just for your understanding only this is actually the x this is actually the y that is the real and imaginary part for you i've just put the directions also so the question starts from it's at the point two uh, i think it's two plus i right okay just a second it's two plus i so x is actually two and y is actually one that's what the point from where it starts and then it moves i think i have given it here just a second children yes yeah then it moves one unit eastwards one unit eastwards means which will be changing the real part will be changing so this will be three one then two units northward. So northward means the imaginary part will be changing. So this is 3, 1. This one added with 2, it's 3, 3, right? Now two root two units to the south. That's what is the what you know. Okay. So initially you got the basic idea, but what you actually want to find out is the new position or the final position in the plane. So once you have this, you don't know this point, right? Final position. You have this point, you have this distance. What you can do is you can just take each option and you can substitute it. There is no need to think of the higher concepts. Here it will be minus 1, minus 1. If it's minus 1, minus 1, 3 and 3. 3 minus minus 1, the whole square plus 3 minus minus 1, the whole square. 16 plus 16, it's root 32. So what is it? It's 4 root 2. Same way minus 2, minus 2i. What is it? 3 minus minus 2i plus 3 minus minus 2i. It's 5 square plus 5 square root 50. It's 5 root 2. We have to get this as 2 root 2. Now 2 plus 2. 3 minus 2 whole square plus 3 minus 2 whole square. It's root 2. We want 2 root 2. 3 minus 1 the whole square plus 3 minus 1 the whole square. It's 2 square plus 2. It's 4 plus 4 root 8 which is 2 root 2. So you got the answer as D. When you have to solve it in the initial way, you just have to take the angle, you, whether it's uh, it's of the form cos theta plus i sin theta, whether it will be of, whether you have to take that half of 90 degree, whether 45 degree or the 135, you have to work in that way. But with this question or whenever you're facing this question, this is the very simple way in order to solve this. Very simple way which you can make use to solve this question. When it comes to south, how you will be taking this? This will be something like cos. So, 2 root 2 cos 45. When it comes to the, uh, I would say it is given as southwest, right? So, when it comes to the west direction, you will be taking it as 2 root 2 sin 45. That's the actual way in which you will be solving the question. But this is a very simple way where you can solve it. Because you have the point, you have the value, you have to find the other point. And that is actually given in the question in the form of uh, the other complex numbers or the complex values. Is this question clear? No, no, no. It's just 2 root 2. Okay, maybe I think um, during the typing it have. I think just a second. It's an equation editor only. Yeah, it's 2 root 2 in the equation editor only. So, please be, mm, please do look at it again also. That's very, very important. For those who was confused with the question, 
is this question clear can we move forward or dear children based on your opinion only we will be moving so please do confirm whether this question is clear whether you have got the answer for this question can we move forward the previous year questions of ATRIP is also available in the same portal where you are writing the practice test. Every Sunday we used to conduct the examination, right? In the same portal itself, all the previous year questions are there. You will not be able to download it in like ATRIP 2022 question paper, ATRIP 2023 question paper. It will be there. It will be a mix of a lot of questions. It's, it's actually like a question one thing. So, yes, I want you to solve the next question. Z is given as 3 cos 45 plus i sin 45. Then what is 1 by Z? Very easy question. Z is given as 3 cos 45 plus i sin 45. What is the value of 1 by Z? <coughs> Sorry. Session, I'll give you an idea towards the end of the session. Please hold on. There is somebody who has given me an answer. D. Okay. 3 into cos 45 minus I sin 45. Somebody has raised their hands. I would request you to type that in the chat box so that it will be helpful for me. Okay, there is option D, option B. Okay. All those who have completed it, please do recheck it. That's very, very important. Okay, I'll just solve this. What is actually given? Z equal to 3 cos 45 plus I sin 45. So, what is 1 by Z? 1 by 3 cos 45 plus I sin 45. I just have to solve this. It's Haddi, I think. Uh, okay. Awareness option B. Okay. Okay. Let's check. Here. <coughs> I'm just multiplying it with 3 cos 45 minus I sin 45. So I have the basic thing. This A plus B, A minus B. So it will be 9 into cos I sin 45. Sorry, cos 45 minus I sin 45. And this will be something like cos 45 plus I sin 45. So here this is cos square minus I square sin square. So I square I can substitute for 1. And this will be cos 45 minus i sin 45 divided by 3 into cos square 45 plus sin square 45. This is actually 1. So, this is 1 by 3 into cos 45 minus i sin 45. That is 1. There are two students who have raised their hands. I Can you please type that in the chat box? I think chat box is accessible for everyone. If you have any queries, please do make use of the chat box or the Q&A. Please type that. Is this question clear? Now, I think we'll just solve one more question. This is also a very simple question. I want the answer from you. For all complex numbers, Z of the form 1 plus I alpha. The alpha belongs to R. They have given it clearly. Z square is equal to X plus I phi. Then what? Which among this is satisfied? Or which among this is true? Which among this stands? For all complex numbers, Z of the form 1 plus I alpha. Alpha is belong to R. If z square equal to x plus i y, then which among the following is true? So, yes, initially I have z equal to 1 plus i alpha form. If I am solving it, I will be able to find out the real and imaginary part. If I have that part for x and I, y, I can substitute it here and then I can find out the equation. So, z square equal to 1 plus i, oh, sorry. z square equal to 1 plus i alpha square. I have just substituted it. I have 1 minus alpha square as the real and the 2 i alpha as the imaginary. This is what x plus i y is. I got x and y. So, from this, I will be able to find out the value of alpha. So, for the next part, I will be able to substitute it. So, here I have x equal to 1 minus y by 2 the whole square and x equal to 1 minus y square by 4. So, I got this. So, I will just show you this once again. The whole concept is... <clears throat> Given in the question, for all complex numbers, z of the form 1 plus i alpha, alpha belongs to r, z square equal to x plus i y, that is that is given already, then which among the following stands or which among the following is satisfied. 
So you can equate for the values and you can find this out. So yes, I think that's all for today's session. I hope I was able to cover some topics and some questions. Is there anything that you want to ask? You can type that in the chat box. I'll just show this question once again. And then I'll, I'll just start answering your queries. It's option B. That is correct only. So yes, I hope this session was useful and you got an idea about yeah some of the previous questions or some of the questions some of the patterns that are important when it comes to ATP. Hope all the questions are clear. If anyone of you want me to repeat a uh, question here, please do type that in the chat box. I'll be able to help you. Uh, actually, we used to give importance to mathematics because the more weightage is for mathematics. Because 120 questions out of 300, it comes from this mathematics only. And uh, dear students, those who whose doubts are cleared, you can just leave and please do join for the next Thursday session. And one more tip is, please do solve as many questions as, as possible during this time. That is very, very important. And I would request everyone not to look into the theory chapters now. It's problem solving. It's a high time for problem solving. Uh, no, there is no minimum cutoff or nothing like that. And somebody who was asking, please give some uh, chapters that are important. So that I have already given you an idea. Uh, there is English component also. It's just verbs, the very basic thing. Um, very basic concept of English that you have studied in the schools. Something like the synonyms and all of them. Just five questions only is there. It's 40 from mathematics, 30 from physics, 25 from uh, chemistry and five from English. Okay. Now, another thing is, uh, yes, coming to that, from each chapter, there will be at least one question. It's not like one chapter, there will be five questions. No, 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 no writing, no essay, nothing. It's just multiple choice questions only for the English part also. And for those students who are asking about the syllabus and other things, just give me a moment. I'll just show you the website and everything once again for those people who are confused about it. Okay. Yes, I hope the screen is here. And this is the uh, BTEC page where you have applied. Here you can go to the information handbook. Towards the end of this handbook, you could see the syllabus. Even for English, we have given the basic idea. It's just articles, synonyms, antonyms, the very basic things of English. And if there are 16 chapters in chemistry, I would say that there will be at least one question or, or two questions from each chapter based on the number of questions in the examination. It's not like there will be five questions from this chapter, six questions or eight questions from one chapter. It's not like that. There will be questions from all the chapters. So that's why I'm, I'm not able to say whether there will be... Um, and you can check this during the exam time also. We'll cover almost all the syllabuses. Uh, uh, no, the scoring or the marks also, I can't predict. I would tell you the reason. Last year, it's like there might be uh, something like for Koyamthur, if 5,000 or uh, 6,000 was the cutoff. This year, the competition might be high or might be less. So, it will be based on that count only. I could see, Hedi, you are raising your hand. I would request you to, uh, it's Hadi, I think, I'm so sorry. So, I would request you to type your query in the chat box so that I'll be able to help you. Uh, those students who want to okay, call CBT mode. 
Rudrashir, can you please explain what's your problem? I'm not able to understand it clearly. And those students were asking my name. I have seen two or three places. So I work as a part of uh, Amrita University. So my name is Lakshmi. Uh, I hope the session was useful. Is there anything else that you want to share? Yes, the previous questions are in the same party where you are writing the practice test on every uh, Sunday. Okay. And yes, all the previous session videos are in the webpage. It's, uh, sorry, in the YouTube channel itself. And I have updated it here. So thank you so much, dear children. And it's very crucial time for you. I'm, I'm not saying about our exam or it's it's very important for you to write the exa entrance examination and get into the university. So practice more questions. Don't focus on theory. Start practicing more and more questions when you're free. And when you have a doubt about one theory topic or one area, just go and refer the um, particular portion. That's how you have to study. It's not about reading one chapter completely, then solving questions about it. Okay. Because you have already completed your 12. You have studied everything once. You have completed your board exams. Everything is over. Now it's time to practice. And it's okay that you are not able to solve the questions. It's completely fine. You just have to revise the concept and start solving it. I could say, please tell about this, but you have not mentioned what. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. And we'll meet on next Thursday with another chapter and uh, questions. ACCC second phase exam is going to happen from May 2 to 11. May 2nd to 11. Uh, Rudrashree, are you asking about the centers, whether it's the locations, Coimbatore, Chennai, something like that? If you have once selected, there will not be an edit option for you available. What you have to do is, you have to mail it as a request to meetakachamjrita.edu and my team will be working on it. Okay. But then I would say three to four, two to three days, they'll be changing it. Okay. <laughs> so whichever you require as the other ones, you have to give that. If you have selected the order, come to Chennai and Bangalore, you have to change it. And uh, Shanmuk, I would say, will not be possible to predict a percentile. That is very, very important. There is no cutoff or there is no percentile range. It completely depends on the competition of that particular year. Because we nowhere we have mentioned that this rank is for up to this rank, this branch or something like that. So it is completely based on the number of students are opting for one particular branch. Uh, actually, uh, to somebody who is, an, we don't offer architecture, so there is nothing, um, no class, nothing. Yes, we do have students from different boards, so there is no need to worry in that. You can change the places of entrance examination, it means the locations or the centers or the cities that you have selected. For that, you have to send a request to btechachamrita.edu based on what you have already selected, what you want changed. Okay. What you want now as the center, the three preferences that you have to make. So our team will be checking it and then we'll be informing you. And uh, what you have to be careful is you have to send mail to BTEC from your registered mail ID only. We'll not be accepting any other request. If it's from the registered mail ID only, we'll be working on it. So please do take care of that also. So yes, I hope I have covered a lot of things. Yes, the recorded session will be available. Just give me some time. Once this editing is done, it will be up updated in the same YouTube channel. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all.